Good morning. Um, this is a story about how Kevin saved his own life yesterday with a self-applied tourniquet. So I have on my crazy blessed shirt today because that's how I feel. God was in it the whole time with the events, the way it happened. It was only, it was a God thing for sure. But he went fishing by himself and um, he was going to cut bait and his, with his fillet knife, which you know that's a sharp knife. Something happened, the boat rocked for whatever reason and he jabbed in his leg. Well, he knew he was cut bad and he knew he needed to get back to the boat landing because normally he has a tourniquet with him on his boat, but he was in a smaller boat and he did not have one in the smaller boat, but he had one in his Jeep, so he knew he had to get back to his Jeep to get the tourniquet. Well, there was a bass boat near him and he hollered to that guy because his engine was cold, motor was cold in the small boat. So when he first tried to start it, it wouldn't start. So he hollers to the guy in the bass boat. The guy in the bass boat couldn't hear him and didn't know what he was trying to tell him. So Kevin thought, well, I can't wait and keep yelling for him. I've got to get back. He knew he had to get to his Jeep to get his tourniquet. So the motor started the second time and he took off towards the dock. But what he didn't know is the guy in the bass boat came in behind him. I mean, the guy didn't know what was going on he just, for whatever reason, decided to follow him back. So Kevin gets out of the boat. He, well, he's driving and trying to hold the wound because he knows it's bad. He gets to the dock, gets out of the boat, goes, he gets about halfway up the boat ramp, and he hears the guy behind him um, yelling at him. So he just turns around and says, I'm cut, and keeps going, and the guy catches up with him at his Jeep, and Kevin's in there getting his tourniquet and he thought to take his cell phone and the knife with him. The, what's, I already forgot what it was. The fillet knife with him because he knew he was going to have to cut his pants off. Because you can do a tourniquet over your clothes, but it's better to do it on your skin. And um, so he starts cutting his pants off. In the meantime, this guy who has no clue who Kevin is takes off his shirt and starts applying pressure to the wound. Kevin gets the tourniquet on. And in the meantime, the fire captain from a nearby fire department just happened to be there. Had his radio, so he was able to call the EMTs. And so they got there pretty quick. Um, I don't know, did you pass out? Well, in the meantime, Kevin's, of course, laid on the ground. But did you pass out before you got in the ambulance? So once he gets in, he's he's good. He said his mind was focused. He was not going to die out there in that boat that way. So his mind was focused and got him there um, to the Jeep to get the tourniquet. But I guess once the paramedics got there, maybe the adrenaline just let down. I don't know, but he passed out. In the ambulance. Well, in the before this, he's trying to call me, and there's no service, and so I can't hear him. Don't know what's going on, but I knew something had to be wrong because usually when he leaves, he just sends me a text that he's leaving. So I texted him and I said, you know, text me. I didn't know what to do if I need to get in the car and head to the boat landing. Number one, I knew he was going to fish until after dark, and this was right before dark. So I knew there was some reason that he was leaving early. So finally the fourth call he gets through and I hear a siren as I answer. So I knew he was getting ready to tell me something had happened. So he tells me what's happening and he's on the way to the hospital and to meet him there. So I jump in the car and I head that way, but of course he'd gotten there before me and he was already back in a room before I got there. But I called my friend on the way. She met me there. His best friend, he had called him to have him come check on me and he was already there when I got there. 
So they took him back, and and I'm going to put pictures in because obviously we don't have any video of it, but I did take pictures at the hospital. They, I had to wait. They finally let, let me back there with him, and at this point, tourniquet was still on him. He had stitched up, they had stitched up the wound, but they were sending him for a CAT scan to make sure he didn't get his femoral artery. And um, so he took him down for that, brought him back, and finally came in and said, I don't know, did he say, he said radiology read the scan and didn't think he got the femoral artery, but the doctor, decided to send it to the vascular team and they looked at it and came back and said that you know you they missed the, missed the femoral. yeah it missed the femoral but it got it an artery that branches off of it um, but before all that he the doctor was going to loosen the tourniquet and just to see what his leg was doing and when they did, it shot blood across and got on the nurse. She told us later it shot all over her and she had to stick her finger in there to stop it. Um, so they tightened the tourniquet back. But anyway, they got the bleeding stopped and we weren't sure if they were going to keep him or not. And I wasn't sure I wanted him to go home because I was kind of scared that, you know, something might happen while he was here. I didn't want him to go home too soon. But once the doctor sent it to the vascular team and they looked at it and, you know, thought it was okay, we were okay coming home. They told us what to look for to make sure it wasn't bleeding inside his leg. And, um, anyway, he was in horrible pain last night. <laughs> That's my phone. Today is a little bit better, but God was all in that that the guy in the bass boat, you know, I don't know if we would have followed somebody, if we would have thought, because he told Kevin later that he thought he just caught a fish. And, you know, he, for whatever reason, well, I know what reason, he followed him and he was so much help. Kevin said once he got the tourniquet on, gosh, my phone's gonna keep going off. Um, once he got the tourniquet on, the guy just, he laid down in the parking lot and the guy was putting all the pressure he could on his leg. And for the fire chief to just happen to be there, who yeah. could, captain, I want to keep saying chief, to be able to radio the EMTs, because I don't know now if Kevin would have even, I don't know if you could have called 911 because I couldn't hear him. I think when you finally got in touch with me, were you already in the hospital on the way or were you still? Yeah, so I don't even know if he'd have been able to call 911 from his phone there. I know he sends me text when he's leaving from there. So, you know, there's just no other way to explain it. He wasn't far from the boat ramp. That was the first good thing. And then to have those two people, and he said that gave him comfort having those two people there. He just said he he was just so focused when it happened that he was just not going to die that way in his boat out there. And I guess that kept him focused enough to get to the Jeep. But we went back today to the boat landing and I mean, there's just a blood trail all the way from his, where he got out of the boat at the boat dock all the way up to where the Jeep was. And the boat, there's, I mean, it's just thick in blood. He would have died if he'd not had a tourniquet. He'd taken a class, so he knew what to do. But, you know, it couldn't have been easy to put one on yourself and wrench it down as tight as you have to. But I'm so thankful he took that class and knew what to do because he saved his life by putting that tourniquet on. He probably would have died out there if not. And actually, he said if he'd gotten the femoral artery, he, he would have died out there anyway because he wouldn't have had time to get back to his Jeep. So I'm sure he won't forget to put a tourniquet in his boat, both boats from now on. But you never think you're going to need it. And I never thought he would need it. But I am so, so thankful that he had it. And, I mean, it's a happy ending. He's going to hurt 
for a while, but he's alive and you know, we just, it was a happy ending. So if you've ever thought about getting a tourniquet, I say do it. You never know when you're going to need it. He always thought maybe he'd come up on a car accident or something and he might need to use it on somebody else. I don't know if you ever really thought you would have to use it on yourself. But he took a really good class. And we're thankful to God that he's here. The circumstances, there is no other explanation. I mean, there's just not. There weren't many people at the boat landing when he got there. He said maybe there were five trailers. So for this guy to be so close to him where he was fishing and the fire captain to be there, you know, there's no other explanation. So anyway, just thought this wasn't the video I was going to put up next because we have some mountain video and some more video from Jeep Jam. But I just thought I would share this. So, like I said, if you've ever thought about getting a tourniquet and you think it's crazy because you'd probably never need it, you might. never know. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye.